We are so many in the body of Christ in years past that have come and blessed the church. But if we're not careful, we'll forget about those who touched our hearts, who have given their time and their energy just to lead us and, and help us worship God. We need to be more thankful in the body of Christ for all of the saints that God has brought through our past, all of the, the songs and the CDs and the tapes that were made and just, uh, just those who just loved music, those who loved writing, all of those who were gifted that helped us to see God at different angles, that helped us and taught us truly how to worship, who inspired us. We should be so thankful that it's because of them and through them that we're able to communicate to God even on a greater level. Corsicana. What kind of worship did y'all have? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start that's, there. That's the country. That was that's the country the gospel. Level. We literally sang all kinds of country gospel in the house. I would come home and on Saturdays, like we would go to the skating ring, we would come back. Mom would be folding clothes listening to country gospel. So Gaither, country music, oh, yeah. uh, Gaither vocal bands, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. That's what we grew up with. Mm -hmm. So somebody would bust out with a hymn and we just kind of jazz it up. Wow. That was the baby. That's how the baby started. Yes. The Burnett. The whole like the, family would do this? Or was that just a <laughs> No, that was the whole family. Wow. I can, I can see family. that. Yeah. It was sort yeah. of a Then the Burnett entered. Then the Burnett's and from the <laughs> from the next beat. <laughs> the beat. 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 The We grew up in the Dallas area. So we had a. We had all kind of scene going on around us. Right, 24 7. 24 7. We was part of it. Start with our mom and daddy. Start with our so, mom our, and daddy. our love of music uh, and worship came from our parents. Uh, yeah, it came from mom and daddy. Yeah. Even before that. Yeah, even before that. uncles. Yep. Yeah, singing. Our, our family our period song. But growing up, we, you know, we saw so much. Um, the church was so much different back then than it is now. The mm -hmm. fellowship amongst mm -hmm. churches was really, really. Yeah. Major, it's in the Dallas area, it was really, really. Well, major. Would you say that there is more freedom now? Because you know, remember when we were growing up, everything was like this on the stage. Yeah, that's not good. Everybody had to, stand, you know, do your part. We had to all stand up. Now I just feel a little more freedom when we're on stage singing. I, the audience, I the audience, audience I think the audience yeah. was it's livelier. Now. Yeah, the, audience, back then. the audience was livelier. People would bring their tape recorders, right. have them on the aisle. You couldn't even walk through the aisle without stitching cords because people were excited to be right. there. People yeah. were smiling and waving at each other, yeah. trying to get to their seats. Yeah. Is there a, a parking space? Right. No, there's no parking space. Freedom so, wasn't an issue. It wasn't an issue back there. So I don't think back in that time we were focused so much on freedom because that's all we knew. That's okay. Yeah. Right. Phrase that way. I agree. I yeah. So I don't that's, think that's I, all I think we all we all, all we knew was that. So I think, in an essence, there was a f type of freedom. It was fellowship. It was fellowship. It was more fellowship. Yeah, because we grew up. We in a, we were in a place where, like Melody said, you couldn't. You was you had to get there early to get a seat at homecoming. Yeah, right. And musicals. I, going to musicals right. at at Cedar Crest and at Dallas West and at Cedar che which was Cherry Valley. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, was going, packed. it was time. Every time, and everybody ate together. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody jetted when it was time to eat. Everybody stayed for the homecoming and they ate. That's and they how the Burnett's get in the summer. Every summer, we all always having a homecoming. We, we ate a lot of chicken. chicken, and we were on program. We had a lot of chicken, green beans, and corn. A lot of it. Yes. 
and white <laughs> bread. But, but look, she was one of bread. Well, real cakes. No yeah, Timmy, Timmy, can okay. you please share uh, about your musical experiences? We done got all off in the I was going to the East Coast. We thought about I was headed to the East Coast. Well, let's be fair. I'm walking on that. Okay, okay, okay so, so, so I'm not from Texas, so I don't get to share in that same thing. What was new for me when I came here was musicals because we actually called them sing-alongs from where oh. we came from instead oh. of musical. So it, it, be, I, it was weird for me to start saying musicals because we always said sing-alongs. But did you guys actually sing along? So we actually did sing-along. Sing along. The audience sang along. <laughs> we actually did sing along. Where's your ball bouncing on each other? So, so my exposure, my exposure. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> Keep My going. exposure, I came from a little bit more of a conservative situation. Now, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. That's where I was born. So there was a lot of singing then. My dad went to Southwestern, so I'm a Southwestern baby. He, he went to David Lipscomb. Like, he participated in chorus. He sang when Sylvia Rose was around. Yeah. So my father exposed me to that music. He exposed me to acapella. You know what I mean? He exposed me to a straight company. Mm -hmm. He exposed me to a lot of those those major chords and those that music music like that at that time and I had to give some credit to Southwestern because if Southwestern had not come through some of the musical talent or or just the the musical freedom or just the difference in music I would have never been exposed to to be honest with you being in a place that didn't always have that type of singing like if you're if you're maybe from here from Texas you might be exposed to it all the time but in my area we weren't always exposed to it so when I saw the tour come when I saw tour come to North Carolina for the uh, for the um, um, what is it the the giving day what is it that they national national, 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 the national, national dinner, dinner day. day I was like I want to go you know what I mean <laughs> and so it was like once I once I uh, I was exposed to 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 singing at an early age, I started writing when I was 13 years old, music when I was 13, but I didn't really start showing it until I got older. But when I saw Southwestern and them coming to my side, I was like, that's going to be my catalyst. That's how I want to be able to sing. And once I went to Southwestern, it was like history. It was like, boom, that's, that's it. And then... So many people I've met, so many good people have come through Southwestern musically and just, when we used to just sit and sing. Yeah, yeah, right. Look, I mean, <laughs> when we used to just sit and sing, yeah, we have to give Southwestern props. Yeah. 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 You know, you listen to a music now, you can say, they went to Southwestern. You can That's tell, right. like, oh, they yeah. came through. If they hold hands if on stage. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting in a little bit we yes, forget yeah. a lot of yeah. Rayburn came right. from Southwestern. Jay yeah. Green. Yeah. Uh, these are all my, my guys. Yeah. Rayburn Dean yeah. and Jonathan yeah. Green. That, that, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are my inspirations. What, what spring tour were you in? Because Don't I think it was line. 03 uh, or 02 spring tour. Back then. Um, that um, <laughs> came to my church and I was like, oh, I'm going. <laughs> you were back right then. You're right. So you were Bad day. Yeah. Bad day back then. Yeah, you remember that day. Come as soon as we got there, I didn't really have any of my stuff unpacked, but it was just the camaraderie. Like we just went down and we just sang. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just and for me that was beautiful coming from a place that didn't always have it like that, but coming into an environment where, oh my goodness, they're like minded. I'm like I don't have to say, girl, come on, let's sing. They're just like they put a tune out there and you just it's start just so jamming. Forward. You know what yeah. I mean? I think Southwestern is it's a common a denominator. Yeah, it is. It's Seriously. really the, and it's just it's a it's an entire different entity. Yeah. You know, it's what if it was sort of like a mainstay to kind of like you said, it connected yeah. everyone. Even though, um, so Erica, Erica even let's see, Ron, right. you know, through her, her brother, I mean, it's the common denominator. It's the common so denominator. Kind of, you went to Harding. Correct? Yeah, I went to Harding, but my influence was well before that because we became members of the Church of Christ. We, we weren't born in the Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, my mother was Baptist, and so That's she fine. sang with you know Shirley Caesar <laughs> and yes, she, so she did right. all yes. of that before we came to the church. Oh, and know. when we became members of the Church of Christ, my earliest memory is laying on my mom's lap and she sang with the chorus. And I remember hearing her sing and how people responded to her. Yeah. And to me that was so foreign because she was just mom to me. But yeah. to hear people respond, mm -hmm. it, I just didn't understand it. And my brother did not sing at all. I mean, Ronald didn't sing at all. Really? When we were younger, mm -hmm. he was mischievous. <laughs> I could tell you some stories about Ron, but Ron, we didn't know he could sing until there was a homecoming program and Ron was up on stage and he started singing and we all looked like 
who is this guy singing? Wow. And so that was like at 13, which is when he wrote like Cool Inside and yeah. Close to You. So then we formed the Wait, 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 wait. You said he was 13? Yeah. And he wrote a teenager writing wrote songs like that, Cool yeah. Inside yeah. and yeah. Close to You classics. and all these yeah. Yeah, songs Which that have been yes. around for years. Wow. But we didn't know what he was doing at the time. We would just but hang around the house singing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but he did go to Southwestern, mm -hmm. and yeah. we met George yeah. Pendergrass before we went to Southwestern because we used to go to the youth conferences, you know, North right. Youth Conference. Mm -hmm. So being East Coast, that's all we did was homecomings and mm -hmm. youth conferences. So yeah, we met right, George right. Pendergrass, and he was a young kid, but singing the voice that he has now, he was singing like that when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that was my influence, just being around people who love to sing and mm -hmm. just, you know, yeah. it happened. Awesome. And I think what's funny is that. Even though you, we all grew up in different parts of the country, mm -hmm. we were more similar than different. That's right. right. And you had you had no idea. Right. But places like Southwestern, or even just going to college, period, mm -hmm. you know, it's sort of kind of, you know, lets you see what the common ground is. That's right. Yeah. That's I mean, like if you're not a singer, you don't understand what it is to really be around a group of singers that can just get together and just hum a tune and just create music you know what I mean I love being in environments where we don't have to it's not it doesn't have to be scripted you can just say something we could just come up with a, with a song and it's just so much creativity in the body you know what I mean we have so much talent mm -hmm. you know what I mean that I don't think that we really even really use we don't really tap into the fullness of our talent you know what I mean and so I mean I've run across um some great singers like I said a lot of come through Southwestern that I've been exposed to or just but I, I just really appreciate us being able to come together and create music without we don't need no pen and paper we can just come up with something real quick and we do it all the time even when we're playing you know yeah. what I mean? At homecomings, you had chicken groups. People yeah, would go in the back in the room corner, and literally make up songs and sing the group. Right. Let's hey, sing, girl. Go. Come sing some That's panels. And you perform. Exactly. Just oh. sing, you know? Oh. I miss that. Mm -hmm. I miss that. Well, being, yeah. being in Church Christ, it makes you love music, too. Because yes. We have, our ear is so sensitive. Yeah. Too. Have you our, ever tried to sing good instruments? Yeah. Or people That's who sing. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's very hard. It's, very it's, hard. Hard. it's like I struggle with that. Or people that, that. sing yeah. with yeah. instruments, they cannot hear. Right. I've sung with people who sing with instruments, and when you try to sit and sing with them and make harmony, yeah, it's a it's, it's it's like, it's You can't even different. make the same harmony that we can create in the in the body of Christ. Yeah. Something about that something about the acapella music. But we harmonize as kids. We. Since we had such a love for music. We <laughs> harmonized with everything. That's I mean, true. we harmonized with West Way Ford commercials. And uh, I, I would always, I started doing bass on the Jeffersons. <laughs> Well, Did y'all sing Coach's Barbecue? Please tell me you sang Coach's Barbecue. Cold girl, Coach's Barbecue. <laughs> What changed it for me was I remember at five years old, we went to Shady Acres Church of Love. And I saw this man get up and literally take complete control over the church in, in praise. And his name was Harvey Davis Singer. When I saw that, I literally, I remember it just like I was there right now. I said, I want to do that. He would walk the aisle and, if, if, and listen, and he would literally give out parts to me. Yes, he did. While he was, that, that messed me up. Oh, that messed me up at five. I saw him and I said, I want to do that. I want to be just like that. And that's what changed for me. This is for me. Man, I, did you think I remember being a little girl. And at home is when it started for me. Hmm. When Mama would take the dining room chair and move the coffee table out of the way. <laughs> And she would sit it right there in the floor. And she would say, My babies, come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here. And the first time that I, I don't know what was going on, I was little. And 
She would have us sit all around her, and Daddy would sit on the floor by Mama and kind of lean on Mama's leg. And we would start singing. And I was just looking around. <laughs> And give me chills, and I was just looking at everybody. Well, now you know what happened prior to that because you were so you I was was like, very little. You was like four, five years old. Man. Prior to that, you're next to the oldest brother, too. Okay. And took everybody in what we call the boys room. What about two rooms? <laughs> Y'all right, out. Right, right, right. In the boys room, yeah. and literally had rehearsed us uh, to make our presentation oh to mom and dad. Mm. And he was another one. You're talking about influences. Um, when it came down early, you know, uh, Terrell was uh, just in, in, and how about it never, it always felt natural. It felt like it really something that, that didn't, you know, he it would really come did. in and he'd say, okay, we're going to do this. And he would give out these parts and we would say, and, and how about I never really looked at it like, okay, God equipped all of us with different right. voices to make up all of those different things. Right. And it was just amazing to me, but it never felt unnatural. Well, for know? me it was, you know, as a family, we was going through something, mama would praise God in the midst of the storm. Oh. I really didn't understand what the storm was, yeah. you know, yeah. but it seemed like after we got together and we sung praises to God and daddy would end it with a prayer, it was everything was okay. Yeah, yeah. And then going to see um, see Connie and Willie at Southwestern. Yeah. And they used to sit on the uh, steps at Southwestern and just fellowship. It was a family thing. Yeah, yeah. Now everyone has Nintendo, they have cell phones, mm -hmm. they have all these electronics. Yeah. Uh, in the neighborhood, we just, sometimes someone would bust out singing. Yeah. yeah. And then the problem was with that, uh, we didn't have all the mics and everything that we played with. We played with things like, like I remember all the time, you with that Folgers uh, <laughs> coffee can, that big old can, <laughs> trying to put water in and make reverb. I created my own reverb. <laughs> <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> I'm assuming we'll be done. Mm. You know, you had the cathedrals out there, Bill Yonks, the singing bass, yeah. and those cats that were singing a cappella. But back then, I got inspired by that because I, I, one day I grew up, I was growing up, they had uh, Kennedy got killed. Uh, yeah. uh, Martin Luther King Almost got mean. killed, and when I looked at things, I began to learn things. I got real observant because that was my first introduction to people. One day, people will die, and you got to, and you need all of your land. Mm -hmm. But we love to sing, so we would sit out at any given time and just take off on a song and play. It, uh, Telling you, but like I said, when it comes down to first impressions, okay, when we're, we're talking about children, children, and you know, nowadays you got so much going on so far as yeah. worship is concerned, yeah, right, and and where they do it, how they do it, this and that, you know, my whole my whole concept, you know, where, you know, we're a musical fan, we're yes, musically we inclined, always have been, always will be, but the when you got that body of people 
that would come into this place and literally start singing that was one of the most amazing things for me because it sounded like one set of folks yeah, yeah. but it'd be a whole Unified. bunch of people That's what it was. It was and that that you know that concept to me and and, and 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 that actually that attachment to the church of christ about that the beauty of the voices and the praise was uninhibited and it was it was just so it was beautiful. A oneness. It, was it was a, a one. Oneness. That's the word. It the was a oneness one. because we all did it. Yeah. And, it, and like, like you're like your boy used to say, okay, now uh, all you do is just contrib contribute your noise. Yeah. You, you know, you, you couldn't say no. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, I didn't know yeah, I could, Your I, noise, I, just put your noise in there and it'll all blend out. You find yes. your And when you come together and you worship it, and the way mom and dad gave it to us, you know, it was a way that to let us know, hey, we are unified, we are a family. And that's what stayed with me, is that when I come together and I see you know, whatever troubles that I'm having, yeah. When I'm singing in the midst of my storm, it gives me comfort because I'm praising God in the midst of my know we got. about the beautiful thing though? It ain't gotta be a storm. Yes, yes we got songs for happiness. Yes, we, we got songs for yes, joy. We, we got songs. Yes, we got songs. We, we want to have fun. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking about you know with this particular piece right here. Yeah. I'm just saying that the most influential thing for me, and I've sung on stages all over the country. Yeah. I'm saying. That the thing that impacted me the most and even wanted me, <laughs> well, my desire changed yeah. to to grow more into this beauty of this thing was that a cappella worship. Mm -hmm. It started there. Mm -hmm. And 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 just the you know, the infinite wisdom of God, how he's taken a vocal card. Okay. And gave you one, gave you one, gave like 15 million, billion, trillion other people this thing. <laughs> and But you're talking about separate individuals, but when we start singing, it's one noise. It's a, it's, it's a unified noise that goes up to him. Right. What your brother say? <laughs> you know, if you, if, and always to the right. Yeah. If you hear yourself <laughs> more than you hear the person to your right. Back. You singing too <laughs> loud. <laughs> now I can't hear you, and you still not to yourself. Yeah. Oh you my God, man. Yeah. Yes. It but is. it's it's amazing. You have no instruments to hide behind. Oh no, no. Either you got it or you don't. You don't. Yeah, that's one thing about our brother singing now. You, you, yeah, but they do give you grace though. When you get up there and be you singing and singing crazy, sing, go, go ahead, baby. Yeah. Let him use you. Shit. <laughs> but you look at you look, you look at that, how that works. If you keep being around people that sing our yeah. you learn balance. You learn life. Yeah. You learn everything. You learn technique. Yeah. Because what happened? My you, you flock with eagles. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, buzzes. You know, buzz. I like a buzz. Oh, don't <laughs> sound like a chicken in the buzz. Good. Got on the mic. <laughs>
those words, yeah. it's like just Lord, mm -hmm. I surrender. Mm -hmm. I can tear it but it's um, with holy nothing. Oh yeah. I love that song. It's just so yeah. It's because you can come into worship and be so dressed up on the outside torn up all on the inside yeah. and if there's any place you should be able to come and be able to be naked free it should be in the house of God um, what in the world is the song uh, stay, uh, look look then you acting to like mom hey I got four sisters so I'm trying to go around the line <laughs> I uh, was all up my uh, goodness what was it uh, you, oh I had time to say says, you did not create me to fear, but you created me to worship mm -hmm. daily. Yes. And I'm just going to leave it right there. That's all right here. That's, That's my song. Yeah. You know, I think one of mine is one that I don't hear a lot of people singing, but my mom used to sing around the house all the time. And it was a song about holding out. It says, if you just hold out my till to my she used to go through this whole thing about, mm. you know, everything will be all right. And I think about all the things going on in this world and it's going on in, the, in my house mm. and going on. My cousin was diagnosed with cancer and my brother diagnosed with cancer. But just hearing mm. her hum that song, everything will be all right. It's just like always that takes you back. Mm -hmm. To say one, I would have to say we come too far to turn around. It's mine. Can you sing that? We you know? come to to turn wow. around. Mm. That's when, I, when I get in my little mm. place, it's yeah. like, uh-uh, you done yeah. came this far, yeah. you know, used to going back. So yeah. it's yeah. far from here. What is, what is the song that, you know, that you would say, okay, this song is either the greatest song I've mm -hmm. ever heard so far as the Church of Christ is concerned or mm -hmm. the Or which which one is like the song for you? Which one? Oh, yeah, that was that was a good one. Oh, ten thousand angels. Yeah. Oh, oh, ten thousand Man. Two wings. Two wings. Two wings. Two wings. Just I just need to Yeah. I need to. <laughs> I'm one. If I lose one, I'll send me another. Yeah, just send me another. I'll be alright. I don't hear. I don't want to hear. What you said? Boy. Nah, that. And, and also, Mama's song and Dimples. The same made a workout. That made a workout done. Work speak for me. Does like she love me so? Or why me and my Savior come to earth? No, oh, yeah. And that song just takes, well, takes me yeah. to another, a whole yeah. other place because yeah. it's like, he suffered, bled, and died yeah. for us. And uh, one song <clears> that kind of got me through some uh, rough patches not long ago was um, "The Walls of the Rock," and um, and it it because for me it kind of puts you in that place where you realize that you can't lean on anyone else but God. 
and it's kind of like you have sometimes you have to uh, get to that point to the where you realize that uh, that all your help comes from the Lord, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, for me, that was one of my more recent ones. Withholding, withholding nothing. Withholding, withholding nothing. Withholding, withholding nothing. Withholding, withholding nothing. And I give myself away. When I go to the Lord, my own personal worship is, I come to the garden of my home. <laughs> that's, yeah. my, that's my song that just takes me to the place that draws you in. Yeah, yeah. I remember actually sang that to my father as he was passing. Wow. Mm -hmm. I rubbed his head and sang him that song. <laughs> And let him drift on. Mine mm -hmm. says, um, Rescue and uh, God Will Provide. When mm -hmm. my sister passed away, ASAP came and sang that song wow. and ministered um, at that moment in time. So every time I hear a group sing, God Will Provide, I, I almost can't sit. I hear it. Yeah. But I understand <laughs> that in that moment, like, if he's so real, he will provide, you know. So that song really does do something to me. Johnny Wilder's Last Mile of the Way. Mm. That was... Woo. Mark Clemens was before his time. Y'all oh, yeah. getting me together. That's y'all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm hearing yeah. songs in my head. I'm about to make something happen up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to say, here I am to worship. Because it just kind of like... Let go. Brings me and centers me in mm -hmm. to um, whatever's going on with me at the moment, but to also kind of push that to the side just a little bit because I feel like you know we express worship through our pain, through happiness, through sadness, and all of that. But it brings me into focus. focus. Yeah. 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 For me, it's uh, all my trials, mm -hmm. and when I hear that, when immediately, oh Jesus. 
Jesus. Yes. Right. <laughs> Lay it out. Yeah. Get it off you. And I love her. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. See, see, I know it's rough on you, but sing a little bit of that. Woo. I already know. I done speak for me. Yeah. yeah. And people don't know that they started with Johnny's label. So 
they had released oh, that stamp that. of that sound? That. Well, it came from Johnny's <laughs> production. Yeah. So you remember it is the epitome yeah. of yeah. Church of Christ a cappella for me, because mm -hmm. I grew up in Hallandale, Florida. Brother Bernard Smith, Hallandale <laughs> Beach Church of Christ, everybody. Yeah. So Johnny Wilder was, I, I remember when I first found out that he was with the group Heat Wave, I was mm -hmm. just kind of taken aback by that, but he was a classic. His, uh, his music, you know, in particular, I know just about all his stuff. Mm -hmm. That One More Day CD and mm -hmm. uh, all of that. But well, like you said, he was a game changer. Like what he created and what he brought in, yeah. you were able to actually hear uh, music in his a cappella singing, like it sounded like real instruments. His you know chord I mean? structure, his chord yeah. structure yeah. wasn't yeah. like actual. It wasn't like know, everyone else. It, it wasn't. Was, <coughs> it wasn't was typical. Yeah. Right. It was not. Sound. He it was more contemporary. He was. He was yeah. a little more contemporary. He wasn't. He wasn't straight I gospel. Right. Yeah. 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 I would yeah. agree with that. Yeah. yeah. He brought. I know gospel all. But he was, he was so inspirational. Yeah. And I think he was very humble as well because even when you met him. He didn't come across as somebody, okay, I've been in no. you know the music business for so many years, right. so you need to respect right. me. He right. was always very humble, very yeah. kind spirited, but very powerful in yeah. And I remember when I met him one time, because I was uh, singing in another group and we, we were traveling, and I met him, uh, we met our group, met him this one particular time, and he was, you know, he had already had his accident, so he was mm -hmm. already in his wheelchair. In his wheelchair. And we were just singing a few notes and he turned all the way around. You know what I mean? He was looking somewhere else, but he turned all the way around and he was like, do that again. Like in that moment, he wanted to embrace that music. You know what I mean? It wasn't about you being somebody that was popular or somebody that was known. When he heard talent, when he heard it, he was like, you guys have something. You need to, you need to work that. his humility because even at that time um, he still was always very humble and he was always thirsty for talent he always was, he had a different kind of he ear, had an ear he like right. he, could, he could hear it yeah, you yeah. know he could hear it you know, he could hear me it. my experiences in being like as far as inspirational in music and stuff I, um, I grew up around music you know my family was living five so I grew up around singing all my life Getting inspired is, you know, like first, people say first Sunday singings and stuff. I didn't go to first Sunday singings. My, my inspiration as far as like singing to other people, it was the old folks home. Like growing up. You know how we do it now, that the old, we go to the old folks home every fourth Sunday? We used to do it every first Sunday. So I didn't go to like first Sunday singings. I just started doing that until I was like almost 20 something years old. Yeah, yeah, and it's funny because because you look at my family and you go, you're kin to the Miltons, the, the Fletchers, and you know what I mean? All of these people that sing everywhere they go. My family is from Chicago, so yeah. our family on my dad's side, the Gants, the Hearts, the Lemons, everyone. Anytime we get together, it's always a praise party, whether it's in the kitchen, whether it's somewhere, huh? somewhere in the <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Yeah. We're related. Yeah, that's my sister. Okay, Scott. <laughs>
From Julian Jr. on down, my uncle, um, there was a group, the Rootsy Gant Singers, um, that was at Maywood Church of Christ, where pretty much all my family came from, yeah. Maywood Church of Christ. And just growing up seeing everyone. Okay, Sopranos, you got your part, Tenders, Altos, y'all have y'all part. Whoever can't sing, y'all just jump in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being at the Belford Church of Christ has really inspired me to really bring out yeah. that yeah. ability, you know, that talent, using that talent. And so it's, it's just good. It's amazing. I'm pretty much the same. My experience, uh, I grew up in a family that had singing background. So being in a family where your grandfather is a minister, as well as the whole family is singers. Yeah. You know, that's just that's something that I saw every day. Yeah. So like Brittany, it don't matter if we're sitting in the living room, in the kitchen, <laughs> somebody strike up something, we'll make a song about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's just what we did. Yeah. You know, so just seeing my family go to church and mm. youth conferences and stuff like that and, and to be yeah. able to be called up to sing, that's what inspired me to want to follow in that wow. world. So that's my experience. I do youth conferences and tell it's twin. I was, I was in college. <laughs> like literally, I was in college when I went to the, my first national youth conference, wow. and I was—they thought I was a student, and I actually was a chaperone. Oh yeah, yeah, they—they they had on my tag as actually a student. I was like, dude, I'm 23 years old. I'm a chaperone. You know what I mean? Like it was crazy, but you said Minnesota. I never forget it, man. We love. Uh, I was in the group Genesis. I was actually. I remember that group out. Genesis, me, Lil Robert, my brother, and a couple more cousins, Arzell, and another cousin of ours. I did not know you were there. Yes. Okay. I was. I was actually their bass. Really? Yeah. yeah. I oh wow. Them. Okay. Yeah. And we went to. We could. I mean, we actually could have been. We could have blew up, but we didn't have the right <laughs> management. Like we had nobody really behind us uh -huh. besides my dad and. Them. Because they would, that would, that's where we practice it, at Shirley Eggleston. Like, we would practice right after the Lemon Five practice. So you know how hard that was? Like, you listening to the Lemon Five beat, you gotta come in there, and you gotta come, yeah, you gotta come up right behind them. So this is what I'm following. Yeah, this is what I'm following. My dad facing, my Uncle John, my Uncle James Arthur, you know, all of those guys, man, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> I'm just thankful, I'm, I'm thankful that, uh, like I said, we, we had the opportunity to understand the appreciation uh, number one of the gift. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, we always were taught the humbleness. Yeah, humbleness. You have to be humble yeah. with the gift. Yeah, you know, not look down on people because they didn't have what we had. Right. And what they didn't know is we didn't have nothing. Right. We just had each other. Like just uh, coming up in Sugarland. I came from Sugarland as well, and I think they started forming a little group. Yeah. Larry Fletcher, back in okay. his time. Oh, wow. He uh, came and directed, yes, he came <laughs> and directed one of the groups that we were in when I was like 14, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, because like I said, this is my dad and him. Growing up, you know, I knew every song they sung. I knew yes. when they was going to sing it, how they was going to sing it. But time. It's not with a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> That's the song right there. You know? That's, the That's the one right there. That's the one right there. I know he's going to sing that one. Mm -hmm. Know somebody that's like, Sir, mm -hmm. that's all I knew, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't for me, I wasn't for me. But as a matter of fact, I thought Lil Robert, the first time I heard a CD, a cappella CD, was uh, Working Hard. Okay. And I thought, because Robert sang was the song leader at Belford at the time before Frank came, yeah. and I thought <laughs> that was him singing Anthony. Okay. Part. Yeah. I thought that was Lil Robert. I was like, yeah, that's. I went home and I'm bragging. I'm like, I got a, we got a CD and that guy, yeah, he's our song, he's our song leader. That's uh, Robert Milton. And then come to find out, yeah. after I saw the melody, I didn't even know who I was looking at performing on, on mm. stage. That I was like, they singing that song. Yeah. And then it hit. They were like, this is the melody. And I'm like, oh, I have your CD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, but I thought, well, I didn't. I just didn't know. I thought Robert was uh, his voice. It sounded like Anthony's on that song on that particular CD. They, they have a tape that came out before. Yeah. 
I heard that they want to burn it or something. Yes. <laughs> and it's a good take. It's a nice take. I mean, it's nice, beautiful songs and everything, but it's more old school songs. But they kind of, you know, you know how Frank do. Frank rearranges it. Absolutely. Of course. So Absolutely. he Absolutely. rearranges a lot of the old school songs that they sung on their first album. As a matter of fact, I don't think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think Harvey was in the group at the time. See, Harvey wasn't Mason at the time, and I don't think Lamont was Mason at the time. Lamont older brother, Lewis. Uh huh. Is that triple? Yes. That uh, Terrell uh, taught to us. And, um, man, what was the that thing? And I used to leave it, now I can't even remember. It was so long ago. My God, was uh, I born yet? It was kind of acapella for me too. Mm -hmm. It was like no, acapella, uh, yeah. acapella sure. you know. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay, you know, <laughs> right. 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 Way right. 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 So, so my dad was in the era, and he loved acapella music. So he always was always playing music right, with chords, right. and, uh, and acapella was uh, straight company. Those were the groups that mm -hmm. I grew up listening to. So mm -hmm. I learned to to get a real appreciation for music and sound and chords and and the difference in making music. And so my dad um, and my mom they actually had a singing group. <coughs> Oh, yeah. in Memphis, Tennessee, and so they wrote original music, and so their oh, group went so hard. I was like, I'm sitting in the corner, I'm like, oh, so it's hereditary. Wow. It's hereditary. <laughs> 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 For Christian stars, I'm just yeah. saying. Oh yeah, because that's, you know that's, that's my brother. That's my brother. Texas. <laughs> yeah. 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 Why do I have to put one Midwest. single or name out there? Chris Turner, because he sung with oh, a little facts. bit of everybody. Facts. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I remember the old days when he was with Southside Singers. Mm -hmm. He was the first one to put the mic in my hand. Mm -hmm. So and I'm four hair. years old, can barely even. And he put the mic in my hand. He still doesn't call me Jonathan to this day. Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. <laughs> Baby Jesus. <laughs> He'll tell you I'm about that. What? Baby. Yeah. Baby Jesus. Jesus. Oh, he <laughs> Get out. <laughs> He yeah, just told me that in California, oh, in front of everybody. He's out of order. He's out of order. He's out of order. <laughs> he's out of order. <laughs> I think the album no, that, that changed thing, like you know? uh, the trajectory of how I looked at acapella music was Johnny Wilder's My Goal. Yeah. yeah. Because he had Still so classic. many <coughs> like chords right. in there, like it's time was music. And I was thinking like, golly, like if yeah. I can ever yeah. hear that kind of music and be able to record it, like, right. God, like it's like, wow, how did he do it? Is like how I was thinking. And so now, like even when I write music, like some of those chords, are in those songs and I still listen to yeah. Johnny Wilder. We still do the same day. thing, like the way that we write and the way that we do mm -hmm. things, we still do things with those chords. Mm -hmm. right. I, but like I said, I grew up on the straight companies, mm -hmm. the uh, Forkers of Stars, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and Al Pratt from South, uh, from mm -hmm. Hallandale. He started the camera. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, my congregation. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm, I'm all love up it. in it. So yeah, yeah I'm all, <laughs> all up in it. So I love my company. I don't know about y'all, but like my mom was over the choir for like 15, uh. 20 years. And so that was another thing. Like yeah. me, my brother, and my sister, mm -hmm. we had like a group with my mom. We were called the Andersons. Very creative, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just on the stage. I've never heard of such I'm like four. <laughs> <laughs> Four years old, you know, already just up on the stage yeah. performing too, and then watching my mom direct, and I'm like, this is amazing stuff. Yeah, I think we can all relate to that family atmosphere because yes. my mom, we, we got the beatings if we didn't, and it had to be perfect. We sang for every piece of company that came to the house. Oh, my yes. 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 Me, Monty, yes. Monique. <laughs> the song y'all was rehearsing. Yeah, and it was it was perfection. It's always perfect, oh, you know, because yeah. it had to be. So had to be. That's why now. You know, gonna be there. Yeah. <laughs> When I was younger, I actually used to cry every time I got up there and saw mm -hmm. I can see that. Every. And my mama. I got to I got to right. okay. I'm going to get beat up on camera. No, but my mother 
gave me that nice little whooping that one time, and I, I yeah. ain't cried yeah. since. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, worship service. Again, I always go back to Howlandale because it was, for me, it was just the epitome of worship. Um, we had uh, uh, <laughs> Brother Richard was our, our song our song minister, and uh, he just did such a great job. It was an old, raggedy building, but the sound was so beautiful, and the worship was so absolutely real. And I haven't really experienced it. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like that in such a long time. We were such yeah. a cl close knit, yeah. you know, family of people, and we just the sound rang. You know, mm -hmm. with the rat, <laughs> <laughs> with the rat, we saw him, but uh, no, we weren't. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> he was there. Ben, That's the best Ben got the worst of it. Ben was saying, Ben. <laughs> No, but it, it was just so good. And I remember being young and just wanting to wanting to hear it. Like it was yeah. not just the music, yeah. not just the, the songs, but uh, the the worship, the singing, the the, the word. Mm -hmm. Bernard Smith, the word. He brought the word so deeply and so richly. So I remember just being engaged at such a young age, and I it took me to where I am today. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can credit worship for for my love. For music because I grew up in North Carolina so it was super conservative so it wasn't a whole lot of you know shouting and praying and praising and being able to um, exhibit your love for him no, in a very allowed. emotional way so for me it was it was it was what created the great moments for me were when people were able to come in when I was exposed to traveling when I was exposed to oh, yeah. Southwestern and different people came into my area, that created a whole different excitement for me because I was like, I'm looking for that. Like, I want to go to that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So for for children or for individuals that do not grow up in an environment where they're like, worship is 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 emotional and is everything. When and that's one thing I love about Southwestern is that it exposed Most so much. You know what I mean? It exposed children to so much to Christian education to Christian singing because other than that, mm -hmm. I, I would have never known and right. you know a lot of people say when Southwestern came <laughs> I knew I wanted to go I that's know right. I'm it, we but almost, I wanted to go see <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what, but really really are we going to act like that <laughs> 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 you right alright I overlooked it but we love to sing it I remember one great moment for me was as soon as we got yeah. to campus we all just <laughs> sang yeah. we just oh, went yeah. downstairs and night. we just sang Oh, I did that too. Immediate, like, yeah. you know? And y'all fell in love. No. Oh. <laughs> right after no. Oh, really? No. Oh, really? That first initial um, singing, yeah, because I heard some notes that didn't agree. And, uh oh. And so oh, they, they, they brought the referee out. Music. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> No, but, but God worked it out somehow, some way, years later. What about South Side music 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 What about ASAP, though? The truth, yeah. was the truth, though, yeah. because now I did hear ASAP before. Know. I heard Southside Side Singers. Yes, yes, they came and did an entire yeah. concert at our church, and I was like, "Man, when I grow up, I want to be able to do that. <laughs> like travel all over the place and like sing, and people pay for us to stay places and yeah. just give yeah. us what I was never in it for the money. Like, well. um, <laughs> I hear that. No, 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 no. So I guess you went next. <laughs> is able to remake these songs yeah. to keep them vibrant. People like Paul, that yeah. basically he'll dust oh, that yeah. stuff off and you forgot that was an song. Yeah. 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 He'll make a remix. <laughs> 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 Right. Have you shouting up in here? Yes, yeah. right. Yes. That's right. As we should, for sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the Lord. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad yes. the church has gotten to a point where we're not just all chill and right. oh militant in service, where the spirit can truly be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's where the, the is, that's the place it. that I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it was like you. Mm -hmm. You hated the service ended. Yeah. Like, come on, give me one more give song. Me yeah. one more. Give me another one. Because that's when we let God actually be in control. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You yeah, know, when He's in control, it's in control. And yeah. we don't have to worry about anything else. <laughs> I experienced that the most at homecomings. Yeah. 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 Church homecomings? Yeah. Oh, that would give me like the musical portion of it. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> what I have found is that worship 
allows you to have the opportunity to be delivered. I think yeah. when you okay. put a cap on worship and praise, you're teaching people how not to be delivered. And when I when I'm able to shout and when I'm able to praise and when I'm able to raise my hand freely, um, it it does something to me. Mm -hmm. It allows me to be able to, to release the and surrender. Mm -hmm. And I don't and I and I don't like when it's downplayed. You know what I mean? Yes. Because worship is such a big deal to God. You know, mm -hmm. it's a really yeah. big deal. You know what I mean? So I appreciate being among singers mm -hmm. that love it you know what I mean I love being around it you know yeah, what I mean sure. and I can't wait to get to heaven because I want to hey, 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 hey. like I want you to do something different <laughs> I'm singing soprano with him give me Sometimes I'm so confused And in my time of me You come and rescue me was my church service. Right. So mm -hmm. that's why I listening to Paul Williams, listening mm -hmm. to uh Willie Williams, whoever it was, you know, um the South Side singers definitely have inspired me yeah. to wow. keep my spiritual walk. This is funny. I was just when we were out in LA a couple weeks ago, I was talking to Chris Turner and I believe it was Robert Guy about this. What's funny is that people back in the day, you know, you had somebody who was back in the woods, who was in a country, didn't know that there was a certain sound for anything. So they came up, they were just being themselves. <coughs> so when they came together, it was amazing because you have all these people who are kind of under a rock. Now they come out and you're like, wow, I didn't know people could do that because you weren't influenced by them. Yeah. Now we have the age of, oh, I heard that, so I'm going to repeat it. You know, I can go somewhere and I'm like, they did it exactly like the CD. So I'm not really sure if that, it, I believe it's good because it brings people together, you know, creativity because we're able to flesh. fellowship, and but the creativity level, right. like you said, it, it just plummets right. because mm -hmm. people aren't being themselves and some people don't know how to block out other influence to create. Right. Mm -hmm. I think there's only a few people who can create regardless of the noise around them. Right. Very few talented people and Johnny Wilder, or, uh, uh, Jesse Morale, like people mm -hmm. like that who are able to block out the sound mm -hmm. of very few people can do right. that but I'm not really sure if that is a pro mm -hmm. I don't I, it feels more like a con to me because you kind of have this conveyor belt music happening mm -hmm. right you know right. If, if someone repeats one word ten times the next group t it repeats it and right. people say it's and everybody hot. got the same story but can't <laughs> yeah. say it's it's hot. Everybody says it's hot. Yeah. you want to say it's not <laughs> They said, you know, it was so dope. They said, Lord, ten times. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, it, 
there's, it's just missing something there for me. It, yeah, it, it's reinventing the wheel. It's reinventing the wheel and people are doing the same. And, and ain't nothing worse to people who really know music mm -hmm. to hear somebody that does it the exact same way. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I can remember that and I won't name a lot of groups, but my mom sang this song called Stirred Up. And that song has gone throughout the brotherhood and people who sing it sing exactly the same way. So I remember mm -hmm. I singing on a program with another group and they invited my mom up to sing it with them. And they had a soloist who was also singing the song and they expected her to sing it the exact same way. Well, Mom was one of those people who just creates mm -hmm. on the fly. She just sings. So the person thought they were going to be able to, to kind of tag sing with her. Sing. Uh -huh. But she sings completely different. Mm -hmm. So you're right. They kind of get in this repetitive sound. And then when somebody breaks that moment, it's like, oh, man, I yeah. was expecting that. It yeah. throws the whole train off board. But as a creator, you mm -hmm. kind of have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do mm -hmm. is going to seem groundbreaking. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's slightly different from the norm. Mm -hmm. Have you heard this? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. so you kind of have this opportunity. You know, to kind of start from ground zero. Yeah. I know one that's hard to duplicate, though. Mm -hmm. Harold Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> we try to duplicate him. Let's not try to do that. Yeah, he sings it different every yeah. time. Yeah, he's every different time. every time. Ray Sean Booker's like that. Ray Sean Booker's like every that. Time. Malcolm is like yeah. that. Malcolm is yeah. like yeah. that. Social media is amazing. I've heard people, uh, well, actually, I've got texts on my phone while I'm in worship. <laughs> and probably had just got through singing a song and I would get a text right. Chicago, Detroit, York, yeah. Los Angeles, Detroit I mean just all over the place and my phone is blowing up you know I got it on vibrate <laughs> I got it on cable, on cable, I'm sorry I, it was on vibrate, they were sitting over there it was just buzzing but after worship I would look and they would say man you sung that song this morning. Oh man. And I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Some social media. Yeah. It yeah. it impacted uh the praise uh so far as as, as the world got a chance to feel mm -hmm. and to see and to hear what we knew all along. Right. You know, is that that particular praise and that sound and that worship in its purity mm -hmm. uh, was an impact to them. And I mean, I have been places, you know, outside of my, my musical career, people mm -hmm. had saw me, you know, and said, man, you don't even understand what you did to me. That's true, because when I, um, when that, when this craze first started, um, I know Earl Washington was one of the first ones that you see yeah. pop up uh, all the time on videos. And you start to hear these different people like, who is this? Or, you know, I've never heard of these people. Even traveling to Southwestern, you kind of, you know, there's some gaps in there in the traveling. Mm -hmm. And th th for me, yes, you're right, because I would play it on Sunday mornings. And it, it kind of, you know, opened your mind up to the, the idea that there were other people in different pockets of the country that you had no clue were there. And it was very inspirational because you, you grew up in your one little lane. And so now you're like, wow, the possibilities musically. But then what do we do with it? Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh yeah. man, it is. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Man, you have people all over the world, Absolutely. man. Literally text and be like, wow. Yeah. I got a text the other day from a song leader. I think he's in North Carolina. I met him while we were singing. Dude texted me, he was like, dude, y'all praise and worship is off the chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't never seen nothing like it. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, man. And this dude, I met him twice. North Carolina, as a matter of fact, soul influence went to North Carolina. And he was doing the, he was the, over the musical for the lectureship that they had. And me and that dude have been cool ever since, you know, Facebook friends. Whatever. But he literally texted me during church service, matter of fact. <laughs> like, dude, wow. Right. And, and he I had, think because yeah. there's such a stereotype of what we're, what we're, what we're supposed to yeah. be like. And yeah. it's like, oh, I'm, you know, yeah. you try to invite somebody, oh, y'all don't want to get down, you know, yeah. you're a sister, man, so da, 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 da. but yeah. it's yeah. not necessary, yeah. just praise, praise God. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how many people just by, not just YouTube, but, you know, nowadays, Facebook Live, yeah. you know, people yeah. from other states uh, out yeah. of the country are tuning in every Sunday yeah. watching worship services at the Church of Christ. And, 
Yeah. Uh, whenever we come to town, we're gonna come visit you mm-hmm. all. And so you would have never thought that would happen. Social media definitely has Especially a major impact. Yeah. And you still have a lot of people who like not on board yet, you know. For a while, some people were afraid of technology. But think about oh, it. Long time. Right yeah. now, we we have gotten even smarter and smarter. Yeah. And some people were thinking they were afraid that some of this technology was evil or something yeah. like that. But anything that God makes or uh, allows, you can use it for the glory of God. Well, see, here's the thing. You know, uh, when He says, "Go ye into all the world." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know one person that could just like go ye into all the world mm-hmm. themselves by themselves. <laughs> the right. But right. here, social media has now opened up that. That's what you to touch. It, it can, I mean, it, it can, can literally mm-hmm. go global with the click of a button. Yeah. So social media has been a blessing. It just brought us to the closer. Worship. That's yeah. all. It's it, bringing it, us closer. It, it, it literally gives a bigger advantage from the evangelistic aspect. Yeah. It, 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 it empowers us to say things. We don't have to get on the boat and go out inside the bay. Yeah, yeah. And speak Stand in the middle of the water. Like, like Jesus did. Y'all meet us at the joint. Because we, we can't walk on water, but we yeah. sure can get on the internet. But that, like I said, the social media year has been wonderful uh, so far as uh, just just basically showing that, hey, this, this, this is what we do. We're praising God, yeah. you know, and, and uh, you know, and if you get the chance to stop by and want to hear it feel it everything like what we do it only takes one person wow, to, to, to start start it up and i tell you it's a it's a moment of peace and, and, and you can relax it's like you just giving god a part of you yeah. and and everybody sees it everybody all at once sees it. but it also you can, can feel it that's mm-hmm. the thing about gospel music yeah it's it's it goes deep within to the soul, you know, it's, it's, it's heartfelt because, you know, you sing it from a place that nobody can see, but yeah. God knows exactly what's going on inside when you sing. You know, Stephen Roberts helped me with that, you know, mm. when, when Mama was passing away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, at the lectureship, and I felt like my, yeah. my head was about to explode because the pressure was so great. Yeah. But I, you know, uh, Steve, he told me, he said, don't be selfish, man. He said, your mama's here right now. God allow your mama to be here at this lectureship in Southwestern. He said, get on up there and let the Lord know how you feel this, you know, mm, inside. Yeah. Let him have it. Let him have it. Mm. Mm. Have the same and he gave me, he gave me, he, I mean, he shook me up. And I tell you, that, that is, that was a one-on-one with you, God. Yeah, but guess what? The whole world saw it because of social media. There you go. That yeah. is. <laughs> Various stereotypes, yeah. yeah, and you know, to just sit there and act with people that would never come on a on a personal invitation. Yeah, you know, you sitting at home and you get, oh, let me see what she keep at bugging me. Let me see what they talking yeah. about, yeah. and you get an opportunity to be exposed to the way we worship and the yeah. way you know the way we it's no different than anyone else. Yeah, you know, but I think that's. Uh, you know, it's a stigma yeah. about us, and, and those walls are being broken down with social media. It's really helping. I'm glad of you. You need to. Worship is an opportunity for all saints to come together. It's an opportunity and it is the place where healing and love and understanding, clarity, chains are broken in worship. Families are healed in worship. Addictions are broken in worship. Jesus communes with you in worship. Worship is something that God has given us as a gift to connect with him. Now, why wouldn't you want to take the gift of God? Why would you skip the gift of God? It is in worship that you really truly learn about yourself. It is in worship that you understand how broken you are and how pure he is. It is in worship that you truly become a man, that you truly become a woman of God. It is a place where the saints, the angels, the Savior, the Father, 
and the Holy Spirit all unite as a family and we all shout hallelujah. The songs we sing are the songs that point to Jesus. It's so extremely important for us to remember these songs because in times of darkness and in trouble and in times of joy and happiness, these are the songs that bring us to the feet of Jesus. It's something God does not require preaching in heaven, but he does command singing in heaven. There's, there's no prayers in heaven, but worship and song is what you find when all is said and done. And after judgment, we'll still be singing to God. We'll still be praising him. And if you don't know how to sing, if you don't know how to praise him here, then you won't enjoy heaven. God has gifted so many of his children with the gift of lifting his name up in song. And so it's important for the church to recognize and appreciate uh, and honor those who are leading us into what will still be present in the afterlife, in the celestial realm. When we see God and we, we sit around the throne, we all going to sing how we made it over. And it's those songs that we'll still be singing at the throne of Jesus Christ. I love the most about worship is prayer. When prayer happens, it's like the, the silence and the, the unified respect that everyone in the building has for our Creator. You know, it's not you know, I love my preachers. I've been loving my father is a preacher. My yes. brother's a preacher. My nephew is a preacher. Yeah. <laughs> but the prayer part, mm -hmm. the prayer part is when it seems like to me everything that we've came here for is solidified. It's validated. Because now we are giving homage, respect, and thanksgiving to the reason why we came here. And that's for him. That's 
That's for fine. me, I'm in my daddy's house and I'm safe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's my yeah, house. Okay. But you look at when you're in worship, you, you, you're in the hospital, you, you, you're in the father's house, and you can tell him through prayer exactly what's going on with your good times, bad times, what you expected to happen, your plans for the future, and asking God to help you with every situation and every phase of your life. That's what we love the Church of Christ. I love the Church of Christ. I love the Church of Christ. <laughs> I love the Church of Christ. Thank you. This was fun. Hey, y'all. That was hilarious. Can you ask me? over there. I love shaking bikes. Okay. Thank you. Now, and another darn nothing.